Back in the day when Yakuza like a dragon series first began, it really wasn't well known in terms of being in the West, but sure it was pretty well known in the Japanese market. But that was until Yakuza 0 arrived and actually changed the formula as to how Western gamers took a look at the series themselves. And it was banned upon it was banned upon two remakes, three remasters, and so on and so forth. So if anyone were to have like the modern systems to play, like PS5 or Xbox systems, they could play all six main installments in there. But this is what I'm gonna be talking about is this spin-off title. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. This was meant to be an expansion pack to one of the games, but it ended up being into a standalone title for $50. Which, it is the shortest in the series with five chapters, but just because there's five chapters, doesn't mean there's not much to do. There's plenty of things to do. Now, returning, there's a little while of returning. The XP system from Yakuza 0 actually makes its own return. You get the money, and you also get the economy points, which... With the economy points, you have to get them by completing these economy quests. Where, or like favors, you could say. For example, someone needs like a water or something, you give it to them, you get money and points or something. It really depends. You can also go to the economy headquarters and decrease the points and at least gain more money by defeating enemies. Now returning also is the Master System games that you guys can now play in a Yakuza like a Dragon side series. Besides Judgment of course. So there has been a few new Master System games. And there has been one new arcade game that I've noticed. One new arcade game is Daytona USA 2 but due to license issues with the Daytona they ended up changing the name to Sega Classic Racing or Racing Classic whichever goes on the thing, which I will say it is pretty fun. I thought this was a Daytona game. End up doing a research, I was correct. Because there was a Dreamcast game with a Daytona name which plays quite similar to the arcade experience. So with this one for its plot, it takes place after Yakuza 6 and during the events of Yakuza 7 like a dragon. So, in terms, your code name is Jurio, and you have also got two different fighting styles you can deal with in the game too. You got your traditional Yakuza style, but I know people are going to say that it's a new thing. No, it's just a rename of the dragon technique, or at least fighting style you can say. And a brand new one is an agent one. Now it's kind of similar to how the rush ones work, but this is quite different. Because you can use your gadgets to help you create strategies in terms of like... You can create strategies in terms of like how you want to like fight enemies. You can whiplash them and then you can use your enemies to throw on other enemies. You'll see what I mean when I say that. And you can switch it up every once in a while or during a combo technique. Now I should mention something too. There are these side stories as well which can also gain you a comic points. But they can only be certain stories can only be accessed in certain tiers. You have the bronze, silver, gold, and the platinum tier. How do you gain these tiers? Well there's a Coliseum and how many matches you actually compete in, your rank goes up. Meaning you are eligible to actually face off these other tiers as well. You also have the team rumble ones and whatever else there is too. So with the team ones, you can recruit people and they can help you win these things. You can level them up by training, gain their relationships, and more. Cabaret bar clubs are back again, but this time they're live recorded instead of like in-game like little interactivity stuff. There's also the return of Yakuza Zero's and Yakuza Kiwami's Pocket Circuit. I'm not making this up. They actually brought it back. Customizables and everything are still there from Zero and One, so they technically never ruined the thing anyhow. So, like I mentioned too, there's karaoke still, pool, darts, you name it. 
Oh, by the way, Akami has a, its own shop too, so you can get yourself like additional stuff. So, grinding in the game is pretty easy, as I can say for myself. But you also need to make sure you don't waste your money in terms of like if you want to get some items and such. So, I know in the new direction now that the Yakuza like a Dragon games are now a, a turn-based RPG. Don't worry, this is a beat em up game, just like their other games in the series. So th you don't have to worry if you guys are feared that this is going to be one of those turn-based RPG games. And I do have a lot to say in terms of turn-based RPGs, but it's not going to be on this video. So, considering if you guys are familiar with the beat em up style of Yakuza games, it's all there, so you don't have to worry about anything. Now, there's, a, there's not that many places to explore. You do return to Osaka like you would in the previous games, like Zero and the, I think the remake, you also return in that one too. Regardless, all your familiar locations are still here. If you guys want to play arcade to distract yourself, go ahead. It's all there for you. Especially some of the ones that are already still in the, in the previous installments. So everything is there for you guys. In terms of everything, when you explore around the city, there's these hanging glowing objects you can use. You can use your whiplash to actually gain these items. It's randomized too. It could be a, a golden plate, a, a Sega Master System game, and plenty more that you can find. There's also a mission where you have to grab seven gold balls. I'm not making this up. And after getting the seven gold balls, you can get any wish you want. That sounds like Dragon Ball. You know, didn't they do this in Zero? Because I think they did that the same thing too. So anyhow, if you guys like Yakuza Zero, there are some elements in that game that happen to have been there as well. And I've already explained quite a few of them. In terms of everything too, the Coliseum has like four different modes. Especially, there's a special fight ones where you fight your, your familiar characters. Speaking of characters, if you guys were to get the deluxe version of this game on any of the systems, you can actually get the legendary fighting pack, which comes with the three characters you guys are familiar with in the Yakuza Like a Dragon series, which you, they can really help you. And they're in a pretty good tier too. So definitely keep training them if you have to. This game has a lot to do, even if it is a short game. Like, it is more content than, say, Assassin's Creed Mirage, even though it is a $50 game, there wasn't that much to do in that game. But this one is a complete different story. I always feel like the Yakuza series feel low-budget games, but that's not a bad thing, considering high-budget games have been proven that they can be a terrible thing. And we've all known huge examples of that one. I don't want to go all day on that one, which I'm sure you guys will understand where I'm coming from. That's why we should get these low-budget companies, like the Ryoga Gotaku Studio, a, a chance. There are some arcade games, like, I've already mentioned the Daytona USA 2 under a different name. They got Virtual Fighter 2.1, which is an updated version of the original Virtual Fighter 2. You got Fighting Fibers 2, and Sonic Fighters as well, and you got a few other games you guys can play on there too, so... There really isn't much in terms of arcade, but Master System, They've added in some returning ones from Lost Judgment and more. Now, like I was mentioning about the subquest, you can also sometimes complete them. You can gain yourself like recruits for your Coliseum team if you really need to as well. And there's also some quests in terms of like rivalries and the pocket circuits as well. So there's so much to do. You can even customize your own outfits as well. If you want to be Coliseum only or you just want to happen in game. You can toggle it to have it in-game cutscenes, or you can just turn it off if you really, you know, don't want to. But that's up to you guys. If you just want to, like, hang out and play some arcade games or Master System games, like, in case you guys haven't know what a Master System is, this was Sega's first home console to be, like, in the North America or whatever. It was meant to compete against this Nintendo's own NES system, but it flopped in North America, but in Brazil, it's still currently the most popular console of all time, and it still is the most popular system of all time, with them still producing 
systems and whatever else there is, which Tech Toy had permission from Sega to do so as as well. They do have like this bundle it up the system stuff with a bunch of games in them, but you can't get them to be delivered in North America because otherwise they would just probably breach contract. There are some Sega Master System games you guys can play on there, like Secret Command for example, or Secret Command though, depending on which territory you live. It's really ramble, but due to the license, they had to change the name of the game. But there are like a few you still need to collect, but I will say this, at least the, the Master System games aren't DLC locked, like certain games were locked in DLC, like Lost Judgment. This Master System itself has more colors than the average NES system, which you think they would win by this. But there has been also arcade ports to the system, whether that's a good port or a bad port, it's all there for you guys to play. So it's like this, if you guys are waiting for infinite wealth to come out like I am, well, this is the game that you should definitely play. It's available digitally only in North America for this time, but there are physical versions, but they're not in America as of yet, which I'm surprised, but whatever. I end up getting the game digitally because I just couldn't wait. I really want someone to give me this game for Christmas, but finding out that physical copies aren't available in North America, I decided to get the game myself, play it, and I enjoyed it. There's so much to do, even if it is a small game for you guys to play. And I hope you guys will enjoy this game as much as I did, because there are some wacky moments, as always in the series, that you can always sit and play when it comes to the Yakuza Like a Dragon games. I'll hopefully do more of the series itself, especially if there are some spin-off games, whether that be good ones or bad ones, per se. Oh, and one more thing before we wrap this up. If you guys are also wanting to play Infinite Wealth, which is coming out in January, don't worry. There is a special demo packed in in the game. So if you guys want to see what the preview is going to be like, definitely give this a check out. And by the way, there is supposed to be an English dub coming out in this game, but it's not available at launch, so it may come out in the future updates. So yeah. I hope you guys will enjoy this game. If you guys want to see what Infinite Wealth looks like, this is the game to pick up.